Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome to Seabed. Seabed is a Yuri themed mystery visual novel told through the perspectives of three separate characters, Sachiko, Takako, and Narasaki. I have no idea who these two are, but it be one of those characters I'm assuming. So let's start this game. Created by Paleontology. Is that the study of, uh, dinosaurs? Hmm. Presented by Fruit Bat Factory. People that made 100% art and shoes. 200% mixed juice. The light from the round moon broke into countless rays, wavering as it drew back. My head felt empty, as though I was submerged in water. My eyelids felt exceedingly heavy, and so did my entire body, languidly sinking into the bed. Even in the darkness, I could tell Sachiko, my childhood friend, was right there next to me. I've known her for 23 years. Oh wow, I was 28 now, which meant I first met her when I was 5. My family moved that year. Our new house was only a 30 minute drive down the mountain from the old place with a large supermarket behind it. There were no shops around where kids could spend their allowance save for the occasional moving stall. Back in the day, I thought of my new place as a huge city, but that was far from the truth. We had few buildings that exceeded five stories, and you could see both edges of our town as well as the factory at the sea from the northern mountain. But the fact there were fewer rice fields and more buildings compared to where I came from made it seem like a bustling city to my child's mind. On the day we moved, my mother drove back and forth between the city and the country many times. I got into the back seat of the car with the last of our luggage. Initially, we took the same road we did to reach my kindergarten, but once we had passed it, the roads turned fresh and alien. And seeing how we kept driving along the river, I somehow thought that perhaps I could make it back to the countryside on foot. Not that it mattered. As I lost myself in thought, I barely even noticed when we finally reached our destination. As our car blasted the few unfortunate pebbles off the parking lot, my mother told me that we had arrived. The parking lot was positioned right in front of our new house. Its white lines, denoting where the cars should stand, curiously slanted. Glancing out the rear window of the car, I spotted a red four-story apartment building. Back then, my child's mind failed to comprehend why anyone would want to draw those lines slanted. Now that I think about it, it was probably to make it easier to park cars driving in reverse gear. However, I moved from that apartment before I could get my own car, so I never had the chance to test it if it was worth sacrificing one or two potential parking spaces for a bit of extra comfort. That's our new home, said Mother. Are you still sulking over it? She let out a sigh as I focused my attention on the view outside, refusing to look her in the eye. You make new friends here well right away. What if I don't? Look how many houses there are, plenty of children living here I'm sure. There's a park behind this building, you can go take a look. My mother turned the ignition key to stop the engine and got out of the car. She then opened the door on the opposite side of me and began unloading our bags. But if because there's a lot of houses doesn't mean there's gonna be, uh, children. I suddenly noticed a small girl walking in front of our new house. Well, I guess I'm wrong. She was carrying a red basket and a trowel. She circled around the building, disappearing behind it. As I got out of the car and started running after her, I heard my mother's voice from behind. Hey, Takako, where are you going? I'll go look at that park. Ah. Go check out that park then. Prologue. Clover Design Office. Huh.
Okay, I was, I was kind of I was waiting to see if it actually, you know, is it gonna go on? Because I pressed enter a few times. I think I was waiting for the music. The uh, effects come in. I saw her jet black locks flicker through the slits of my half-closed eyelids. Sachiko turned to me as I extended my hand, her long black hair swaying in the air. She gave me her hand in response. I could feel moist warmth from her palm. Even without looking, I could feel her familiar slender fingers intertwining with mine. As I absentmindedly gazed at her, she parted her lips. Ooh. What are you thinking? Is that my Sachiko? I tried to remember when we last held hands like this. As I did, the memories of how we went to a festival came flooding into my mind. Oh. Oh no, she's talking. Whoops. Which festival? The one we went to back in kindergarten, or was it elementary school? The same one where we got all those goldfish. I'm pretty sure that wasn't the last time we held hands. Oh. You remember how many fish we got? Hmm, was it 20 or so? It didn't go that high. I think it was either 18 or 19. Really? I mean, 18 or 9, it's, it's still, you know, two away, one away. When I came back after looking around some other shops, I found your bowl so full of fish they could barely fit in anymore. You bought me a caramel apple back then, right? Oh, this is so delicious. Did I? Honestly, I was more shocked by how eager you were to keep on catching goldfish despite your scooping paper already being in shambles. I was waiting for it to dry up. Does that actually work? I mean, it'll just get wet the moment you stick it back into the water. Sounds like a waste of time to me. Patience is exactly what you need to win that game. Consider the space above me for a second. Something wrong? I said I was around 20 when I'm pretty sure we only bought one bag with us on our way back home. You're only allowed to take up to three with you. Oh. Well, that really was a waste of time then. But I could choose the cutest and most energetic ones. Good for you. One lived for quite a long time. I still remember having it around the time I got into middle school. Ah, was it that black one with a long tail? Yeah, it lived for so long I even gave it a name. Was it Bell or something? Was it? Can you say it reminded you of a Tempo's Bell? Ah. Don't ah me. Oh yeah, I remember there always being one goldfish in the water tank, but then it disappeared right alongside the tank itself. Did it get sick? I think it was mold or something. One day I realized that it had some sort of weed growing from its scales. I tried plucking it out, but... Sachiko knitted her brows. It grew right back. I think it suffocated in the end. Is that really mold? I found a book about goldfish diseases sometime later. It said that weed doesn't grow on a live fish, but in the case of goldfish, it can grow on mold that gets stuck between its scales. The book even explained how to fix it. Would have been nice if you found that book earlier. Yeah. I closed my eyes and listened to the silence, but it was so overwhelming I ended up opening my mouth again. I think that goldfish resented its master for being unable to cure even a simple disease like that? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know either. I love that goldfish though. I haven't kept another fish since. Aww. Hmm. I liked how elegant it looked as it swam with its long tail behind it. When I got it at the festival, it wasn't that long, you know, but then it grew really fast. It was always different from the others. I see. Aww. Usual spasm woke me up. My ears were ringing. Lying atop my bed in the fetal position, I prepared myself to endure its ever-loudening sound. Oh. I checked the clock next to my pillow. It hadn't even been an hour since I went to sleep. The room was weakly illuminated by a lone light bulb. Soon enough, the string next to the light bulb entered my vision. As I stared intently at the plastic knob at the end of the string, I began to feel like it started to move. Ah, 
It grew bigger and bigger, drawing closer to me at a terrible speed before finally disappearing. Looked away. Wow, that was weird. Only to be met with a noise even more unbearable. I closed my eyes and covered my ears, stiffening my entire body, waiting for the storm to pass. I remembered a surefire way to fall asleep quickly, a trick taught to me by a friend. I had to imagine myself floating on the surface of an empty sea. Yet right now a storm was ravaging my personal sea, making it a less than ideal place for relaxation. I felt sick, tremendously so. Huh. Oh, Sachiko's turn. Well, anyways, I am going to end the episode here, everybody. Or seabed. Okay. So, yeah, this seems to be a little bit of a... Mystery uh, feel to it. Or, I mean, kind of like a... Spooky feel to it, actually. With that, uh, that little text twitch there. I wasn't expecting that, but... I am... I am kind of, uh... I'm kind of uh, hmm, interested in what this is going to bring. Because this is very interesting to me. But anyways, you guys can check out this game for yourself. The link is down below in the descriptions. And this uh, game comes out on December 19th. Hope you guys enjoyed Seabed for this episode. The first episode. If you guys did, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!